Welcome to the beginning of Series 42, everyone. This series welcomes back some really great guests, Jeff and John from the System Mastery Podcast, and we're back into some superhero nonsense, but with a really good game this time. So stick yeah. around for that after our announcements. I'm like it legitimately good. First up, we don't have any special announcements. <laughs> I like how you put in there. First up, so stick around for announcements. Uh, first up, no announcements. <laughs> no announcements. I mean, okay. it's it's standard announcements, <laughs> And right? then I want, dear listeners, I want you to know that after this this part where Ryan wrote no announcements, there are four other bullet <laughs> points. <laughs> we do want to let everyone know that the One Shot Network Patreon secret archive is out there. If you head over to patreon.com slash one shot podcast and pledge $5 and up, you'll gain access to the really great bonus content in the archive. This month, we are going to be releasing a bonus episode where we play a game of Hero Dog Saves Town by Alex Roberts from the Ultimate Micro RPG book, edited by our own network overlord, James D'Amato. It was a really fun micro RPG that we covered, um, and Alex created a really phenomenal game. There'll even be some audience participation needed since someone needs to take on the role of the dog director in the game and make the critical decisions for us. So make sure you are already subscribed to the Secret Archive so you can get to check that out along with a ton of other stuff that's in there. Uh, aside from helping the network out with a pledge to the Patreon, there are other more free ways to help us out. And that's leaving a rating and review anywhere you can leave ratings and reviews for podcasts. Uh, we have links in the show notes for various review platforms, uh, but we also check out places like Podcast Addict. Uh, these reviews really help others find the show as well as maybe push us up in the rankings, uh, which last I checked, we're actually doing pretty well in Canada, New Zealand, and the Philippines, and a few other places internationally, which is really cool to see. Uh, Did you say like Turkey or something? Yeah, I think Turkey was in there. Uh, Ukraine. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, all sorts of places around the world. Uh, so if you're listening from there, thanks for tuning in. Uh, it's really great to know that there's people all around the world, hopefully getting something good out of our podcast. Yeah, I hope so. Mm -hmm. Other things you can do to help us is just talk about us online to other people. Uh, if someone asks for podcast recommendations, absolutely feel free to let them know that we make a podcast that you can put <laughs> into your ears. We do. Uh, we do. Um, we also love talking about the show with people. So feel free to strike up a conversation with us on Twitter or on our Discord at discord.charactercreationcast.com. We have a really great community of people in there. Um, mm -hmm. It's a lot of fun. Every little bit helps us out, and um, it would be really great to see some new faces, uh, hear some new fa have other fa new faces hear us. <laughs> 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 um, you know, joining our um, our group horde yeah. pod. What, what? We need a, a fandom name. We do need a fandom name, don't we? Yeah. Um, I don't think we can define a fandom name. Um, yeah. I thought of one, but uh, I it, it would just feel weird to say it. So, hey, if anybody, I'm pretty sure creationist is already taken for something else. Yeah. So, <laughs> I mean, um, yeah, I mean, let us know what a good uh, fandom name would be. Yeah, that'd be fun. <laughs> <laughs> for now, uh, that's all we have for announcements. Uh, the non-announcement announcements. Uh, mm -hmm. But th thanks for joining us for our Sentinel comic series, everyone. Enjoy the show. Welcome to Character Creation Cast, a show where we discuss and create characters, the best part of role-playing games, with guests using their favorite systems. I'm one of your hosts, Ryan, and this episode, my co-host Amelia and I are excited to welcome back Jeff and John from the System Mastery Podcast to discuss Sentinel Comics, the role-playing game, 
by Greater Than Games. Welcome to Character Creation Cast. We are excited that you are both back again to talk about maybe a better superhero game than last time. <laughs> maybe Never. a better. Never. <laughs> Heroes Unlimited, greatest game of all time. In fact, uh, we didn't tell you this, Amelia, but we're doing it again. <sighs> oh, no, yep. guys. I brought, I brought the book and the, all the stuff and the... Oh, please. Our dastardly plan. Oh, no. I've been tricked. <laughs> It's just the Sentinel comics like cover over the heroes. <laughs> like they can't read in the comic book in class. Like it's actually There's no such thing as the Sentinel comics role playing game. No. Oh, it's all been an elaborate prank. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that would be the, the worst. It's prank the worst prank ever in the history of RPGs. <laughs> it's been a while since we've had you both on for the worst game ever. Which mm-hmm. was, it was great. It was just a, a so Ryan wrote. It, it was so much fun in our outline. <laughs> but I'm going to say no. It I'm was a lot of say, fun. At least several of those characters came out incredibly memorable. Like I, I still tell the story of my elephant who could go from 13 feet to 14 feet. That's, you know, like um, it's funny to listen back to those episodes and like hear just like how much I groan. Like somebody asked at one point, they're like, "Can you put together like a soundboard of the angry noises that Amelia makes in these episodes?" <laughs> um, and at one point, when you start lying to me about what the rules of the game are, just to see what I'll believe. <laughs> um, you'd think we scripted that oh gosh terrible I hated it <laughs> anyway <laughs> do you want to start by reintroducing yourselves for our audience tell people what you're up to all that kind of stuff absolutely uh i'm jeff uh one of the two hosts of the system mastery podcast uh system mastery is a podcast where we go out and try to find old weird out of print or just unusual circumstances rpgs uh, and bring them back up into the spotlight for no good reason uh, we do a lot of other stuff too we we write several books nowadays but uh it's always been about system mastery for us and that's that's the big thing and then also there's john here <laughs> Ah, yes. And, uh, of course, we do some other non-RPG-related stuff. We've got uh, our Expounded Universe Star Wars book read-along, which is currently doing a Supernatural novel because I was allowed free reign for a (laughs) hot second and I've ruined everything. Uh, and then, of course, Never again. Movie Mastery, and we've got our bonus content, TV Mastery, which is so much fun. We did The Littlest Hobo, and now we're doing Snick. Yeah, the opening lineup of Snick as of 1993, and it is a joy. <laughs> Very cool. Uh, well, let's go ahead and get into this game. Uh, we'll start by discussing uh, what it is all about. What's in a game? Let's start by talking about the setting of this game. What is the setting of Sentinel Comics? Well, uh, Sentinel Comics is set in the uh, Sentinel Comics universe. This is a really interesting uh, backstory to where this role playing game came from, because it's based on a card game, which itself is based on a series of comic books that do not exist. What? Mm -hmm. That's the (laughs) that's the gimmick here. Um, Okay. yeah. The the Sentinel Comics universe created by uh, Christopher Bedell and oh, my gosh, I'm forgetting the other guy's name. Um, their whole gimmick behind the, they have the Sentinel Sentinels card game, uh, which is a cooperative, uh, one against an or four against an AI boss card game that's been around for forever. Uh, their whole gimmick is they like to maintain an illusion that there has been a company called Sentinel Comics making comics since the forties and everything, every little bit of lore in the game, the card game and the role playing game is pulled from those comics. And they go as far as to tell you, like, issue numbers of when things happened and oh, wow. those issues don't exist. It is very detailed. That's amazing. Uh, it it oh, yeah. sounds very reminiscent of uh, the Protean City uh, Comics podcast who has a, a very meta like catalog of comic lines that never existed. <laughs> oh, yeah. And the the neat thing is the the actual timeline in the comics for this that don't exist uh go through in the card game up to a point where there is basically a giant cataclysmic you know crisis event Mm -hmm. and then after that is where it starts in the role-playing game Mm -hmm. so you have this entire lore background 
And then it goes into the role playing game. But because of the whole cataclysmic event, things sort of get restarted a bit. So you don't have to know everything from before mm -hmm. in order to oh, play wow. this. It also kind of introduces a sort of new age of heroes vibe where the the uh, the cataclysm changed everything. And now new heroes are rising up from a changed world. And that's where you the players are coming in. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah, this this is a lot more interesting because uh, like I thought uh, like I, looking at the book itself, I'm like, oh, this is probably based on a whole line of comics. And this is really cool. They've got heroes and stuff that you're looking at from the comics. And uh, and that's all made up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, unlike normal comics, which, which are not, <laughs> which of course are factual documentations of history. Yeah, yeah. It's it's neat. Uh, they, there's a lot of parallels to kind of the big two of comic book development. You can definitely see kind of where the Superman or the Batman is and that kind of thing. But mm. a lot of it is very unique, uh, and uh, it, it's just sort of a fun world. But yeah, every one of the characters you see on the cover is a character who existed in the in the uh, card game line. Although the the woman on the far right on the cover is brand new to the role playing game, the other two are uh, Young Legacy and Absolute Zero, uh, mm. established characters from very early on in the card games line. Very cool. Yeah. All right. Uh, well, what sort of uh, tools do we need to to play uh, Sentinel Comics? So the obviously you're going to need the book uh, or the PDF. There's a lot of resources out there they have form fillable pdf character sheets if you want that or you can just write it down yourself uh and the system for creating your character is going to use dice for most of your randomized selection if you want to do a random character instead mm. of just picking what you want to do which obviously we yeah. do yeah. Oh, yes. Well, one thing that's definitely worth saying about this game is that the guided character creation random process is, at least for John and I, I think I don't mind speaking for him here because I'm just going to do it. <laughs> it's like the best random guided character creation I've come across. Wow. Better I than Heroes Unlimited? Unlimited? Sentinel's <laughs> Comics is like the the promise of Heroes Unlimited fulfilled. Yes. yes. <laughs> the I Absolutely is. The idea that you would have gotten from Heroes Unlimited is what sentinel comics actually delivers yeah. yeah and i don't i don't want to leave all the credits out i know i, I managed to uh cough up christopher bedell earlier but the full list of people i wanted to mention were christopher bedell who create who kind of wrote the universe down adam rebitaro was the artist behind the uh both the card and the rpg mm. and then the system is cortex inspired so it's got some cam banks influence but the okay. lead rules designer for this engine was was uh dave chalker so that's that's the full credit list i wanted to get out there nice yeah, I noticed a little bit of uh, the Cortex uh, kind of stuff in there. The very little exposure I've had to Cortex so far, mm -hmm. uh, which is kind of it, cool to see. Yeah, the different die sizes. It's Cortex and... derived. Yeah, it's very different from standard Cortex, um, but it does. You can kind of feel where it came from. Yeah, very cool. Yeah, having read through it, it feels like it's pretty easy to kind of follow where character creation goes like the piece by piece like it's a lot of random rolling if you want but like mm -hmm. um it didn't hurt my brain to try and read through it when i was <laughs> when i was looking through yeah. everything i didn't want to cry as i was reading it so i felt like that was a big improvement <laughs> and yeah. i'll go ahead and pile on more hyperbole i've run this game as as the game master and it is my current favorite game to run oh, the wow. uh the, the dms or gm support tools are excellent yeah, I saw they had uh, some some really good DM style or GM stuff in the in the book itself. But do they have a, a GM uh, separate separate GM book as well? well so they do uh, have this lovely box um, <laughs> that has like uh, like dry erase cards and stuff that you can put all of the all of oh, your various cool. things on, and it has like a really nice screen that has all of the the rules and stuff on it like with um oh that's lovely yeah with nice big print which is a thing that i love because i don't know if you've seen a lot of what gm screens are oh yeah uh, no, too that's tiny cool. to read but like it's beautiful and colorful and so for for the audience at home yeah it's a it's a very uh if you're familiar with the sentinel comics book itself uh first of all it's a gorgeous book um oh, yeah. and it's laid out wonderfully with different color codings and which I'm such a fan of color coding. Oh, it's so great. Uh, but but the character sheet, it's it's all the same style across all of this, which 
feels very comic booky and very uh very visually pleasing mm-hmm. uh, and easy to follow which is really cool yeah oh yeah yeah now for actual character creation the nice thing is you only really need two ten-sided dice uh, not percentile two ten-sided uh well, well that's the game start. uses d4 through d12 yeah uh, all the randomization is just 2d10 for character creation, so that's nice. I mean, okay. the first first roll is 2d10, but right after that, it'll it'll say things like, okay, for your next roll, you'll need a d12 and a d6, or, you know, 2d8s and a d10. Uh, you, you'll never need the d4, but everything else might come up during character creation. Oh, that's true. Way to lie to just us. Just to start with. Hmm? <laughs> I only lie because I love <laughs> I have bad. Don't cut that part. It's so rare that I'm the right one. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of stories and themes are we playing with in this game? Well, I mean, your your standard superhero stuff, obviously, uh, and it lets you decide sort of what era you want to do. Like, it does have kind of a preset setting. But the way that the game works, everything is changeable. So if you wanted to, say, do a golden age of comics type of thing, you Mm. can do that. Uh, You could do a street level heroes. You can do, you know, space heroes, whatever you really wanted to do. Comic setting wise, uh, it's not really going to be good for things outside of the superhero genre, but... Mm. For within that genre, it has a wide range of available things. Yes. And the default setting, the kind of Sentinels universe that the, their their comic books don't take place in, is sort of a golden silver age hybrid thing where it, it's very people don't die. Uh, they beat each other up and then the bad guys get hauled off to jail. And mm. there's not a lot of stuff about due process or crying in the rain. That that kind of uh, modern era of uh, a superhero comics is sort of. It's present if you want it, but it's not the default. The the nineties gritty reboot. Yes, yeah, it's a lot more of that. <laughs> Superman literally flies Lex Luthor to prison and puts him in the prison yard because he stole forty pies in this bed. But is there a Ninja Turtles supplement for this game? <laughs> uh, actually, I, I think there there aren't any supplements yet. Uh, mm-hmm. All of them. There were several that were announced during the Kickstarter that are on their way. Uh, with the first one being a guys supplement, and guys is, for lack of an easier term, this universe is Deadpool. Uh, he's fourth wall breaking, <laughs> wacky hijinks. Has lots of powers that are related to to uh, doing cartoon stuff. And his book and uh, his little ally world and, and section is going to be the first one of their books that are coming out. Very cool. And then after that, the Ninja Turtles. Obviously. (laughs) Mm -hmm. (laughs) Gotta have uh, your mutant animals. Right. Right. (laughs) Otherwise, how how can you be a a Palladium Heroes Unlimited clone? Right. (laughs) Did they ever come out with that mutant Pelicans one, though? (laughs) Here you go. I I don't know. I I think I might have one of the... Because I have every old uh, After the Bomb and Ninja Turtle supplement, so I think I might have the rules for Mutant Pelicans. Right. I'm almost positive that there's Mutant Pelicans. I hate that I'm right about that. I hate that. (laughs) I hate that. Like, I can't even joke about that game because you're like, yeah, obviously that's a thing. (sighs) Well, I mean, that's not not Heroes Unlimited. That's TMNT and Other Strangeness, another Palladium game. Mm -hmm. But hey, there's a multiverse. They all connect. (gasps) Exactly. (gasps) After the bomb adds like hundreds more mutant animal oh, so types many. as well. Um, plus, there's uh, you know the the dinosaurs and stuff that you can do. Exactly. Uh, but yeah, from uh, TMNT uh, Turtles in Time or whatever it was called, yeah, yeah. So uh, back to Sentinel comic. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what what then do characters do exactly in this game? Um, we got the different types of settings that we can do, so we just superhero stuff. I, I assume, right? Yeah, pretty much. It's, uh, you know, like we said, very, like, big, bombastic hero, you know, you take down the mastermind villain and their doomsday machine. Mm. Uh, it's it's much more like you are a big, shiny hero. This is a villain. Go take them out rather than, like, say, a masks where it's much more about, like, 
a lot of interpersonal sort of things and mm. the struggle of being a teen and a hero. This is like <laughs> being a hero is great. And Don't it's be not, a hero. And it's not a metaphor for anything. <laughs> mm-hmm. Is it like, is there any element of like that balancing between your heroic life and your normal life? Or is it just like, this is super. Oh, there definitely can be. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. You you can if if it's in some comic book somewhere, you can recreate it here. Mm. Uh, the the big thing about this game is that uh, it is very driven by being about uh, scenes. So they want to try and recreate comic panel mm-hmm. architecture with, with their role playing style, um, which means that you don't you never even when you're like, OK, we're going to unless you're doing like a little hang hang around session. Even if you're researching the big bad villains plan, there is a ticking clock. Oh. There are obstacles that are going to be being thrown at you all the time. And that's because they want to maintain that kind of driving pace that a, a good comic book would have. Mm-hmm. I mean, you're still allowed to go visit Aunt May if you want to <laughs> and just hang out. But, you know, but anytime you're doing anything related to superheroing, there is a clock driving your action, uh, which we will get into when we talk about gameplay style, I'm sure. Oh, very cool. What do you think makes so, yeah, this it- unique from other superhero games that you've played? Like you've said that this is one of your favorites. Like, I think the biggest thing for me is that this game allows for both a level of crunch in the game that I really love when it comes to superhero games in particular, Mm. but also gives you a lot of freedom as far as reskinning things Mm -hmm. goes, making uh powers descriptors what you do your own thing yeah Mm. so you know if i take a power from here and you know let's say i just have cold energy as one of my powers and then i go get an actual ability that's like uh you shoot someone and they take some damage great I can reskin that however I want it to be, whether I want it to be I shoot like an icicle or I freeze their blood to make them chilled or whatever it Mm. happens to be. There's no specific way in which powers interact with the world outside of the like dice mechanics. And there's nothing stopping you from just making them up. When you're looking at the uh, the power listing, you'll see that there's a couple of categories like athletic and materials and so on. Mm. Those categories are almost as drilled down as they are willing to go. So if you're looking at athletic and you see like agility, speed, strength, vitality, and you felt like adding immovability or burrowing or something like that, which is already in uh, tra- mobility, but what are you going to do? Um, there's nothing. There's no reason not to. You can you mm. can build your character to look the way you really want them to. And uh, it's interesting because one of the things I generally don't like about superhero role-playing games with ob- the obvious exception of heroes Unlimited, the greatest game ever. Um, <laughs> the, <laughs> I don't like it when the power list is extremely specific where you're like, well, I get web slinging. Here are the three things that web slinging can do. And you know, when you look at a Spider-Man comic and he clearly does 11 other things, Oh, those mm-hmm. are different web slinging powers that you can get later. Okay. You uh, say this I, as I, we all got like some form of flight and it was like, f- w- like winged flight with feathers, <laughs> winged flight with no feathers. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, I don't like when the powers are specific. <laughs> well, you see, there's a there's a magical quality to Heroes Unlimited, which is that I played it when I was twelve. I see. Okay, yep. you're right. That erases any logic. To yeah, the I'm not rest flying with statement. wings. I'm flying with nostalgia. Okay. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Heroes Unlimited is the wind beneath my wings. But does it have feathers oh. or no? Because those are two different things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one one as to your physical beauty, so. <sighs> <laughs> but yeah, this is uh, Heroes Limited is cute for an, for a, a very old game, and I, I have a, a, a soft spot for it. But this is a very well designed modern superhero game. <laughs> um, you really feel free when you realize you can just reskin everything however you would like to. And having talked to the creators of the game, they really want you to do that. That was the lesson they wanted you to take from this: rename everything. Mm. Uh, make just make it your own very cool yeah so this is when we talk a little bit about the history of the game before we start learning what we need to know for character creation um so yeah we we talked about this was based on the sentinels of the multiverse card game on the mm-hmm. lore um kickstarted in 2015 
uh, and fulfilled in 2016. So that's not too bad. Um, oh, and yeah. then it sounds like there's more on the way potentially. Yes. Uh, they had a whole list of supplement books that are coming. Hmm. I am sad that I hadn't joined the like TTRPG scene online until like 2015 or so, uh, maybe 2016. So I missed this, unfortunately, but uh, goodness. You got it now. Getting well, that book. I got it yeah. now and the book is gorgeous. So mm-hmm. uh, I'm excited for other stuff. Me too. Let's go over some like terms and concepts before we dive into everything. Um, I just wrote down a bunch based off of like the example character sheet that they gave you in the book, um, the way they kind of labeled everything. I don't know how much of it we really need to go over ahead of time, but we can kind of talk through stuff. Um, I started with attributes. Which isn't really a thing for like the system. It's mostly just... You know, you put down your age, your height, what you look like, what your hair is like, your physical attributes are just whatever you want them to be. Yeah, Mm. they're just they're just descriptive. They don't have any rules associated with them there. You you can build your character to look like whatever you would like to. Notably, I felt that this was important because there is several lines in that box to describe your costume, Um, Mm -hmm. which I felt like it was an important thing that we need to make note of. (laughs) (laughs) Well, they really want you to feel that superhero vibe. So there, yeah, absolutely. There is a tremendous amount of space for just writing down every little detail about your, your costume. Does it have that, that hex mesh stuff that, that movie superhero <laughs> costumes have, or is it just spandex? Uh, I hope it has some fringe. I think. Oh, nice. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see what we roll. <laughs> I don't know if we can roll for yeah, fringe yeah, or not, did, but we did it. We did a one shot of this with, uh, with James D'Amato and, uh, I know my character was super disco inspired, so she might have had some fringe. Oh, that'd be very good. Nice. More more superheroes with fringe, please. <laughs> yes. Um, characteristics. They have background, archetype, power source, and personality. On now, the those are actually meat and potatoes for this game. Each one of those four characteristic list, uh, blocks is is one step of the character creation process. You're, you're going to roll or choose a background, an archetype, a power source, and a personality, and then each one of those will inform more choices you will make at that level. Okay. So so background will be where your character came from. It'll be things like, oh, my character has an academic background, or they're an alien, or they're from out of time somehow. Uh, Archetype is uh, the the way they got their powers, essentially. I'm sorry, Mm -hmm. got that backwards. Power source is the way they got their powers. So it can be things like natural, like you're powered by the the trees, your swamp thing, you're the elements, Mm -hmm. or experiment. Someone messed with you and and gave you an adamantium skeleton. You've got six origins, you're Wolverine. (laughs) Uh, Archetype (laughs) is what you do with the powers that you got in power source. Do you you use them to blast? Are you a sniper? Are you Mm -hmm. an up-close puncher? And then personality is personality oh that makes sense sense. (laughs) Mm -hmm. (laughs) uh principles principles are interesting in that as you are making your character uh two of those characteristics that you get will tell you a principal category that you will be able to choose a principal from Mm -hmm. uh and those principles will uh generally be Something that's important to the character. So, you know, if you want to be Spider-Man, you can have that principle of like the mask and making sure that you never reveal who you are. And then also say having a principle of responsibility to everyone and everything at all times. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Uh, But in addition to being a personality thing, it also gives you a couple abilities that you can use to overcome obstacles in if it relates to one of your principles Mm -hmm. Uh, as well this game has twists as sort of weird uh, penalties or things that might happen and it gives you a couple suggestions for what types of things might happen as a twist so if you did have that spider-man i don't want anyone to know who i am a major twist could be someone figures out who you are under the mask. Mm. Yeah. Or yeah. yeah, And then it'll be like, oh, someone figured out who you are. Who is put at risk by this? Is it Mary Jane? Is it Aunt May? Um, The neat thing about the twists, they they show up whenever you're rolling to uh, attempt to accomplish a goal. Sometimes you'll get like you succeed, but you get a minor twist. 
is that there are so many sources of twists. The the villains will have twists that they might that they could uh, potentially inflict on a hero. The mm-hmm. environment you're in can inflict the twist, and then also your principles can. So there's a, a wide list of basically suggestions for crazy problems that could arrive arise. Oh, that's interesting. It, it feels like uh, different moves uh, that the GM would have access to, um, like in a powered by uh, the apocalypse sort of game. Yeah. Although in this case, it is it is a, a conversation who what, what twist because they just want it to be whatever's coolest for the scene. Yeah. So you can the players welcome to be like, well, I have principle of the youth. And so someone's put out by my overconfidence in this situation. That feels like it would flow well. Oh, very cool. And of course, you don't have to go with anything super elaborate or related to that. Twists can also just be like. I don't know, you take a penalty on your next roll mm-hmm. as a minor twist or something like that. Like there is a giant list mm-hmm. in the book of here's some sample twists you can do in case, you know, it doesn't make sense for the scene. Or if you just want to do something quickly, you can just pick from that and move on. Very cool. Kira points. I know this one like showed up in lots of different spots when I was reading the book. There's little spots to mark it on your character sheet. What do we do with hero points? Uh, hero points are something that you earn through gameplay, uh, generally by using overcome actions, which is when you're trying anything that isn't punching someone is almost invariably an overcome action. Um, or I, or sorry, anything that's not a boost, a hinder, <laughs> a defend. Uh, but you, it's with your principle is where you're going to get those hero points. Yes, yeah. When you overcome a problem using one of your principles, you give yourself and everyone else in the party a hero point. Uh, they have a couple potential uh, uses. You can spend them during gameplay to act to activate a couple of bonuses. They also work between games. This game doesn't really have a progressive XP system. You don't get stronger over time but you you can uh build experience into collections of comics that that you see the next two are called like back issues and collected trades oh okay Uh, though you can spend those during gameplay for minor benefits uh and generally when you spend hero points or collected issues and so or collected trades and so on during gameplay it's to broaden or modify your character uh your characters this game doesn't have levels one through 20 instead your character starts awesome, and uh, if you want to change the way in which they're, they are awesome, you can use the sort of XP system to do that. Nice. All right. Uh, the next ones I have are powers, qualities, and abilities. Ah, the meat. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so powers and qualities are going to be where your dice are coming from whenever you want to do something in the game. Mm. Uh, every time you roll to do anything... You pick a power, a quality, and then whatever status die your health is at. Or the scene. Yeah. Uh, And then you will roll those three, and on a basic roll for whatever, you'll pick whatever the middle result is. Mm. So you could have, you know, a d6 and two d10, but if both of the the d10s come up like a four and the six comes up a six, then you'll take a four off of the D10. It's not based on die size, just die result. Mm -hmm. Uh, But then it also means you have to kind of figure out how you're going to do something power and quality wise. Uh, The way in which you interact with the universe is all pretty much powers and qualities or skills, kind of. Mm hmm. Although they can also just be qualities about yourself. So it might just be like, oh, I'm creative. It's not really a skill as much as it is a thing about me. So I might use my power creatively. Uh, But yeah, it's powers, your superpowers, qualities, your skills. And then Hmm. the abilities are the actual superpower. Uh like what you are going to be using those dice on. Yeah. Okay. So, so if I have, you know, laser vision as a power, that's just there. The abil- abilities will be things like, okay, use this power to do laser vision and uh, damage someone for the middle result and also boost yourself with the lowest result. Hmm. So usually they'll take your standard role, which is just take the middle result and give you some twist on that either it's specifically better or it lets you hit multiple people 
or whatever it happens to be. Mm -hmm. Okay. Powers tend to be like the raw form of of your power. So if you're super strong, you're just super strong. And if you can think of a way it's applicable, you can put it into a basic role. Mm. Abilities are ways in which you have honed your powers to do specific effects on the battlefield uh, that have a little more codification to them. Right. And I see that the abilities are split into different zones. Yes, indeed. Yeah. You get access to your abilities in whatever zone you are currently in, whether it's your health or the danger of the scene that you are in will progress from green, yellow to red. Mm. So if it starts out, you know, you're at full health, you're in the green zone and you always start out in the green zone in your environment. All you have is access to your green abilities. You're not pressed. You're just sort of using your powers in a very mundane sort of way, not really doing anything flashy because you're not pressed yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're web swinging through the city. But as soon as you either get beat up or the scene has progressed to where things are getting more and more uh, chaotic and dangerous, then at that point you start unlocking more powers and mm. more things you can do as you try and overcome what's happening. Yes. Okay. And uh, you always have access to everything, every power uh, below you as well. So if you're in the red zone, you have access to your yellow and green zone ability still. Nice. And you'll notice there is actually a fourth uh, category there out. Mm -hmm. uh, out is if your character has lost all of their, uh, their, their health if that happens, it's actually entirely up to the player what that looks like. It's not that you're knocked unconscious or killed. Uh, it can be that you're forced to retreat from the battle or that you've decided to move to an advisory role. You get to control why you're no longer in the game or in the fight, but you are still in the game. Uh, you, every character gets an out ability. It'll be something you pick up during the personality step. Uh, and every time it's your turn in the game, you can still use your out ability, even if you've been knocked out of the fight. Oh, very cool. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's neat. It, and it's pulled straight from the card game. So because uh, in the card game, if your character gets knocked out of the game, it could have led to bad feels like the game still has another 10 minutes on it. Now I just got to sit here. But instead, you flip your your uh, character card to the out ability and you still do it every time it's your turn. I also think that that That's makes cool. sense for like comics in general, because how many times are people dead? But then <gasps> surprise, not actually dead. So exactly. Like, it yeah. doesn't make sense mm -hmm. to just be like, well, that's it. Your character's done now. Like, that's mm -hmm. that's not how that works. <laughs> yeah. It also is sort of a weird thing for comics to be like, ah, yes, you know, Batman and Robin are fighting and ba <laughs> Batman falls down and can't get up. And now it's just Robin as Batman looks at him. <laughs> Like, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> generally you're gonna get to the end of the fight before consequences really take you place know. yeah and even if batman takes a knee he's still throwing batarangs or doing something with a wrist computer that's that's the way he uh he still contributes look he threw out mm -hmm. his back he's not what he used to be he's just gonna lay there <laughs> and, like just take oh, a minute my sciatica. <laughs> look okay sciatica <laughs> is serious <laughs> no jokes back pain hurts <laughs> Pain throughout my back, and you know it, Robin. <laughs> <laughs> Are there any other terms that we missed here that you think people need to know? Uh, I, I definitely we talked a little bit about the whole green, yellow, red status zone mm -hmm. thing. That is something that's inspired by what's called the gyro system, which stands for green, yellow, red out. Whoa. Uh, and uh, I know. Uh, <laughs> Mind blown. <laughs> when you look at the health range, you'll see that there's green, yellow, red there as well and black, which is just. That's when you're unconscious um, or out of the fight for whatever reason. That part is really important. You'll notice that there are dice assigned to each range. There's status die green, yellow and red. Uh, that's because during your personality step, your character will get uh, things like stoic is straight D8s because no matter what's happening in the fight, you're cool as a cucumber where someone might be optimistic and start with a D10 in, in green and end with a D6 in red because their optimism is fading as the fight gets worse and worse mm. for them. Uh, so definitely wanted to uh, the environment in this game actually serves kind of as a character. It gets a turn in the initiative step and everything. And uh, each time it ticks, it moves further and further towards red zone uh, to kind of ratchet up the tension. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. That's very cool. So, they got, yeah, when you're looking at the character sheet, that's about everything that's on there. But there's yeah. a lot more to it. 
I'm sure we can uh, get into the the nitty gritty as we go through uh, the mm-hmm. character creation process. Does that mean we're ready to to make some people? Oh yeah, absolutely. All right, let's make some people. Let's make some people. All right. So I already filled out a uh, player name. Whoa. On my sheet. <laughs> Settle down. Know, oh, <laughs> <laughs> let's not get ahead of ourselves. The D- the DM will do that. <laughs> Okay. I thought we were going to do this like on air for the people, Ryan. So I, know, right? I know. I apologize. I'm ahead of the game. All right. So I'm going to write player name. I'm going to pick Amelia. There you go. Nice. Actually, my parents mm-hmm. picked it, but. I think you might need to roll for that. Oh, okay. <laughs> get, get your book out. Yep. We'll see what happens. Um, okay. So, yeah. What, what are the first steps then uh, to getting our people created? I'll tell you what. The very first step is to roll 2d10. Okay. Oh, boy. <gasps> Already starting off the bat with the dice. The red ones. Mm-hmm. Heck if yeah. Because the... <laughs> we're going to figure out what our character's background is. Ooh. And when you're doing this, the two Keep... dice you roll can either be either one individually or you can take the total of them combined. Yep. So you'll have two or three options for what your background is. Yep. So keep track okay. of your individual die results. Okay. So I got a five and a nine, which means I could be unremarkable, a performer, or anachronistic. Ooh, someone from out of time. Ooh, I'm definitely being anachronistic. That's fun. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's interesting. So I got a six and an eight. So I could be law enforcement or tragic, um, but I could add them together and get anachronistic as well. Nice. Let's all be anachronistic. Let's be turtles in time. <laughs> I, I can't. I rolled a 10 and a 7, so all I can be is academic, military, or interstellar. Ooh. Ooh. Giant yeah, space I, elephant. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm going to recreate my character. Uh, let's see here. I got... <laughs> my sinister plan. I got five. Unremarkable. Eight, which is tragic. Or... Eight and five together is 13, which I can do as math. Uh, Medical. Yeah, that's where you start as an EMT or a doctor, some sort of strange doctor. So I really like uh, anachronistic as well. I could go tragic. I could just mix things up. I'm going interstellar because that's awesome. (laughs) There you go. Are you you picking uh, tragic? Tragic. Okay, then I'll go anachronistic as well, uh, because I'm not interested in law enforcement right now. Tragic is a classic pick. I'm pretty sure if you were to build Batman, he'd start with tragic. (gasps) What? You can pick tragic too if you want. Most optimistic uh, background for a character ever. (laughs) Okay, so so we got our uh, backgrounds, and it looks like each background comes with qualities. Yeah, so that's going to give you a couple things there. I'm assuming we we record those qualities in the quality thing, or do we uh, do we get all four of those? Nope. Uh, let's see. Which oh. one did you choose? Anachronistic. So with anachronistic, you are going to uh, it says to assign your D10 and your D8 to two of these qualities. So you're going to pick two, one of them at D10 and the other at D8. And on the second page of your character sheet, you'll see a drop down. If you have the PDF, I don't know if you're fully winging it. Yeah. Um, then you're going to, in the quality list, you'll put, write down one of, of those and then assign it a D10 or a D8. Okay. So I can choose between history, magical lore, technology, and select from physical qualities category. Yep. So if you want your character to be a, a fighter, then this is your first good chance to, uh, to go get like physical or close combat or something like that. All right. You know what? If you're going to go with that, I'm going to do unremarkable. <laughs> oh, fun. I was just a regular old person. <laughs> yeah, that happens all the time. So, all right. That's a that's a, cl- a more classic backstory for, for superheroes. There almost isn't. Yeah. Okay, obviously I'm picking banter. Oh, there yeah. you go. I'm going to take creativity for one. I've got uh, magical lore and technology. Ooh, you're uh, a techno wizard. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Close combat, imposing, or any mental. If you, what I've done is I have a couple of sheets open here. So, um, if you, you guys have the quality lists in front of you, mm-hmm. no, perfect. Now, for now, I would recommend this. This step also gives you one of your two principles. 
Uh, but principles are way far away in the book and you don't know that much about your character yet. So what I like to do here, and this is just a house rule I follow, is that rather than going and digging up the, the principles of this stage, I just write down principle of whatever type of principle they tell you and then I'll, I'll just deal with it later. Okay. So mine says uh, choose an esoteric principle. Yep. So just write ah. down print, uh, under the uh, that section of the sheet, just write principle of esoteric and we'll just change it out later when we get to that section. Okay. So I'll be taking creativity at a D12 and deep space lore at a D6 for my start. Mm. So when it says any mental, like where's, where are those? Okay, so the mental qualities. I'm trying to find. So page 47, right? Uh, that is, if you've got the PDF open, that is page uh, 55 of the book. Okay. Mm. I just duplicate the tab and go to page 55 and hold it because you're going to need that page a lot. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm looking here, and uh, in the book, the powers and qualities list, um, they give the categories for the powers and qualities, and then they've got a, a whole range of things underneath that. Uh-huh. And towards the back of the book, there is a section that explains in like one sentence descriptions what each of these means. But like we were oh, saying earlier, we you can reskin these, name them whatever you want. You can even come up with new ones if you want to, and it won't mess with the game that much. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. I'm going to put a little sticky tab on this part. Yeah, I think I'm going to stick with Magitech because that's just cool. Now, the last thing it's going to tell you is a set of dice to roll. Oh, yeah. And when you roll those dice, it's going to work just the same as this step. So what you want to do is roll them and then uh, keep tr uh, tabs of what each die rolled. Okay. So for anachronistic, I've got roll a D10, D8, and a D6 for power source selection. Mm -hmm. Yep. So you're just going to want to roll that and then keep those numbers. And it's going to work the same way, uh, except that since you're rolling three dice, you can pick any single one of the three dice or any combination of two. You can't choose all three of them. Okay. Six, eight, and two. Let's see. I got five, six, seven. So I can be mystical, get my powers from nature, a relic that I found, uh, or I can add together to be supernatural or an artificial being. Oh, wow. Or cursed. There's a lot of there's a lot of choices there. Oh, yeah. There's 20 because, options in, in each category at the moment. Yeah. Well, because I'm unremarkable, I don't think I'm going to go with artificial being. <laughs> Could be an unremarkable artificial being. Yeah, just the most boring robot. Well, I mean, like in uh, in Marvel, they've got the, uh, what do you call those? The, gosh. Life model decoys? Yeah, the life model decoys that are, they're pretty unremarkable until they're not, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're, they're perfect replications of the person, except yeah. they're robots inside. Yeah, exactly. And, we'll uh, and they're just, you know. A lot stronger and more durable. No, I think I'm going to be cursed. I was a regular person and then someone cursed me. Honestly, there cursed is such a good background, like mechanically. It's one of my favorites. I feel cheated because two of my dice add up to another die that I rolled uh, six and two. Oh, yeah, I got two eight. of the same numbers. So um, it's kind of. You can still add them together. Um, eight and two tech upgrades. Oh, wow. I got a 10, a seven, and a four, which gives me a, a lot of options. Uh, Wow. I could be an experimentation. I can be a relic. I could be a tech upgrades. I could be an alien, which is perfect for if I want to, uh, <laughs> to really play up the interstellar thing. Yeah. Uh, and then I can also do extra dimensional, which also plays into that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I can do extra dimensional <laughs> or supernatural. Oh, wow. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I got training, uh, nature, powered suit, tech upgrades, and alien. I think are my choices. Yeah. Yeah, I got a six, a four, and a six. So I can do, uh, let's see, experimentation, nature, tech upgrades, or artificial being. A lot I'm of definitely upgrades. taking extra dimensional. That's a, that's a rare opportunity, and I'm taking it. That sounds really cool. A powered suit of Magitech armor would be really cool. Oh, that would be pretty dope. Oh, yeah, for sure. You could have the whole thing, like, just be an amulet, and then when you say the passphrase, it, like, Oh yeah, grows out all you get over yourself. You. A nice magical girl transformation. Ooh, yeah. yeah. Okay, I'm going. I don't know. You've you've convinced me with that one. 
One of the ones for nature is swimming, so that sounds pretty cool. <laughs> pretty neat. Now, uh, uh, you want to keep those dice results, uh, those dice as w well as their results, because now you're going to take those dice you just rolled and assign them the way that this step tells you to. Oh, wow. Yeah, you'll have a selection of specific powers or power categories to choose from, mm -hmm. and... So if you rolled a six, eight, and a ten, one of those powers will be at a six, one at an eight, one at a ten. Yeah, and that's the that's a d six, a d eight, a d ten, and uh, you don't need for this step. You're not using the results; you're just using the dice. Oh, okay. I'm gonna turn to my powered suit section here. Oh, I can't decide. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, assign one die to the power power suit. Now, what you'll see here is that you, as we go through, your character kind of comes together it's sort of a, a, the reason i like this random character creation system so much is that it's not just you know roll a bunch of random dice put the numbers together now try to interpret that each step is providing you with a bunch of choices and you're kind of seeing your character sculpted from clay as you're going mm -hmm. what did you pick ryan powered so suit. i've got powered suit um so i've got a d6 a d8 and a d10 and so i assign one of those three dice to powered suit right yeah so how and important do you want that suit to be as far as your powers go? Right. Yeah. And then the other two abilities, thing. the other two dice go to the other abilities you select underneath? No. Uh, so there's a list of powers there. Yeah. So it'll say you have to put one into the powered suit because you're a powered suit. But mm -hmm. then the other ones will be like select from, you know, technology or whatever. Yeah. And so, so it says uh, select from... Or assign the rest of the dice you rolled at the end of the background step to the following powers, awareness, cold, elasticity, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. So you'll pick okay. two more powers and those will get the other two dice, whatever you don't put into Ooh. powered suit. So now I've got to go back to that page 47. Uh, yep, just always it, have that open. <laughs> it has select athletic powers category, select from mobility powers category and mobility sounds super interesting. Well, yeah, I mean, that's how you're going to get your flight if you want to get that. But it's got a bunch of other nonsense that you can do with it as well. Ooh, I could I could select swimming. You could. Yeah. You could have keep in mind that's suit. super swimming. I know, super swimming. That's true. Super swimming is very different. So assign the dice you rolled. That's like the die. The die type. The die type. Okay. Mm-hmm. Because I was like, I rolled all even numbers, suit. but like, what happens if you roll a five? I don't have a D5. <laughs> I think I'm going to do a D8 for power suit. So now I've got a D6 and a D10. That means one's going to be slightly not as great, and then the D10 is going to be slightly better. Yeah. Generally, when you're looking at the hero, the things that get a D10, or if you're very lucky, a D12, are usually going to be the things that's like, that's what this character is known for. Like, that's what they do. Mm -hmm. So he, you could even say, like, Iron Man might have a D8 in the suit, and you think, oh, but that's Iron Man. He's got a suit. And you're like, yeah, but it's Repulsor Blasts that he's known for. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and if you end up with a bunch of powers at D6, you you don't need to make them part of your uh, regular routine. They're just sort of salt and pepper that's on your character, because after this step, when you're choosing your powers, you're going to move on to choosing your abilities that those powers use. And you don't mm. you aren't often forced to use powers that you have low dice in. So you can focus on what you're good at. And then just in situations where the fact that your character has a D6 in invisibility, uh, you don't usually use it. But hey, maybe maybe this is a chance to try. Mm. A perfect example of that would be in that second Wonder Woman movie where she's suddenly like, oh, wait, I can make things invisible. I've done this this one time and then I'll never do it again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this might be useful later. doesn't matter. <laughs> I have yet to watch that. Well, it gives you the origin story for Wonder Woman's invisible jet, and it is um, very silly. Oh, is that, is that <laughs> like the whole point of the, the movie then? Just for the invisible no. jet? No. No, because I've, I've heard bad yes. things about the movie. It's an extremely minor background moment, basically there to give the <laughs> fact that they brought Steve Trevor back something for him to do by uh, giving him an airplane to fly. Oh, geez. But it's invisible. Uh, yeah, but uh, when you're inside it, it's visible. Oh, boy. But when you're outside, it's it's. But are they visible? No, because they, they don't I remember have that from classic, the comics. 
the Justice League like Super Friends era where you saw yeah. Wonder Woman flying seated through the air. <laughs> yeah, just scooting around <laughs> on the butt through the air. Oh, that's the worst. Oh, well, that movie has so many weird things in it. Uh, it's it's definitely worth a watch. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Not to mention they steal that that jet from a museum and it is fully gassed and the museum has an has a uh, a, a, la- a takeoff strip. Mm. So and I am going to go the jet in the museum is fully gassed up, fully Love gassed that. up, which taking for me, a person who worked in an airplane museum, you don't want that. They drip. They got that drip. Mm. Anyway, uh, as an extra dimensional, I'm taking that for my back. Uh, my uh, this is the step. This is a uh, uh, power source. I've decided to focus in on making kind of like a uh, mix. He has spit lick or great kazoo type character. So I have put a D10 in illusions, a D8 in transmutations and a D6 in teleportation. Ooh, nice. So I think I've got mine. Um, I went with D8 power suit, D6 leaping and D10 signature weapon. Nice. Cool. And so you can really, decide what that signature weapon is now. Yeah, you can do that at any point. Uh, signature weapon is, you know, you're going to say, oh, it's my repulsor blasts or it's my sword of, of uh, omens. I'm just yeah, gonna I it. have a uh, uh, signature weapon as well, but it is my cursed claws. Nice. It is the cursed item that has given me my cursed powers. Uh, I'm leaning into the magical girl nonsense now. Um, I just put love as my signature weapon. Um, <laughs> okay. Whatever that uh, translates into. <laughs> well, obviously, it's a tiara with a heart on it. Yeah, pretty much, right? Yeah. It's a physical manifestation of love. <laughs> Just like me. <laughs> well, <laughs> sort of. Technically. Just like cat. On paper. <laughs> all right. And when you're done choosing you- those, when you hit the point where you've assigned the dice to all of your powers, this step still ha- or this stage still has a few other things to do. Uh, You're going to scroll down just a bit in your power range, and it'll tell you to uh, assign some number of uh, yellow abilities and then if maybe some number of green abilities, not all of the the, uh, power sources at this step provide green, but you'll choose the number they tell you and that you'll often see that they will say to use different powers for each one. So just keep that in mind. Okay, nice. They also when you're looking at those those uh, abilities, you will see uh, a type listing. Uh, there are three types that can be listed there. Uh, a is active. It's something you use on your turn. R is reactive. It's something you do when the trigger occurs. It'll tell you that. And I is innate. It's just sort of a buff that's always on. Okay. And this serves as my monthly reminder to purchase a non-mechanical keyboard for when I'm doing podcast stuff. <laughs> All right. So mine says uh, I get two yellow abilities. Yep. Uh, so each using a different there. power. So I can choose between energy converter, explosive attack, and onboard upgrade. Yep, and each one will use a different one of your powers. Do I have to assign it to a power? Yes. You will assign a power to it. If there's brackets in there, you'll see it'll say power in brackets somewhere oh, okay. in there. You'll take that word and the brackets and replace it with the name of the power. Oh, cool. So onboard upgrade for me says uh, boost yourself using power suit. So that's already filled in. But the explosive attack, yeah, oh yeah, if you choose that, um, is uh, has that power in brackets, which mm-hmm. yep. So any really power cool. but power suit. I really do like the idea of a magical girl who, in transformation sequence, doesn't just turn into like a an upgraded sailor outfit, but goes straight up into power armor. Yeah. So mine. That's that's kind of what I'm picturing, right? Says when you take damage from, and then the brackets are element slash energy. So do I have to pick? Either or uh, like one. If you took a power from elemental energy, mm-hmm. then it would be, it would that, be that one. Power. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Actually, elemental slash energy is one category. Gotcha. Yeah. What that basically represents is um, if you took, like, for example, cold, that would mean that your character has cold blasts, like your Iceman or something, you can shoot cold around. But obviously, Iceman doesn't take a whole lot of damage from cold. So that's him saying, well, when cold hits me, I get a benefit instead. Gotcha. And mine are suitably weird to go along with my whole extra dimensional thing. Uh, I've taken Bizarre Strike, which I'll rename at some point, and I've set it to Illusion. So it's attack using Illusion. Use your max die, hinder that target with your mid die, and then also hinder yourself with your min die, which I like because it's perfect for a little interdimensional imp to be constantly prevent providing weaknesses to himself for the heroes to figure out. Although that would imply I'm making a villain, which clearly I'm not. 
No, of course not. <laughs> no, just an interdimensional imp on the forces of good, like a like a bat might. <laughs> yeah, a bat might do that. <laughs> or slapstick. I don't know. Someone like that. He's a mutant, but what are you going to do? All right. So I chose explosive attack, uh, which lets me attack up to three different targets using my signature weapon. Um, apply your max die to one, uh, your mid die to another, and your uh, min die to the third. And if you roll doubles, take a minor twist or take irreducible damage equal to that die. Uh, well, that, that sounded pretty cool. Um, and then onboard upgrade, I have uh, boost yourself using power suit, use your min plus mid dice. That bonus is persistent and exclusive. Mm. That sounds pretty cool. So I'm, th- I'm, I'm picturing onboard upgrade is like the uh the the next level transformation sequence basically so like i'm already transformed and now i'm gonna transform again to like my super saiyan moon prism power pretty much i mean are you even really a magical girl if you don't have like three steps of possible transformation (laughs) it's true um and then i have to select a green ability it looks like yep Interestingly, both of my green abilities are just inherent things that happen. I don't have an active ability so far in green. Yeah, my green abilities are also inherent. Yep. Hmm. I think I'll take damage reduction. I'm going to give up teleportation in exchange for infernal, because I have a trick I want to do. I, All right. for my powers, I picked inventions. Mm-hmm. Elemental is radiant. And then uh, for self-control, I picked invisibility. Ooh. Yeah. That sounds really cool. Yeah. But I think that for Radiant, it's n- it's going to be dark and not light. Hmm. It's going to like. I also had to choose a dark radiance. Wrap see, myself in shadow. From- <laughs> Sorry. Oh, sorry. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I took Absorb Essence for my second yellow, which is whenever I defeat a minion, which is a type of like mook villain in this game. Mm-hmm. Uh, I get to roll their die. I'll just get to pick up that whole minion and roll them, and that becomes a boost for me. And then I also got a green ability, uh, and I took a tune, and that's why I switched out uh, teleportation for cosmic, because a tune's interesting. It it has two bracketed segments, one of them for any power, and the other for an energy slash element power. So Hmm. the way it works is I boost myself using illusion, which is a persistent and exclusive boost, which if you see that phrase, it means that uh, that power is that that boost stays with you. You get that bonus to your rolls going forward. Uh, and exclusive means you can't generate another bonus to yourself using that same power. Um, but I boost myself using illusion to create a persistent and exclusive boost. Uh, and while I have that boost up, all the damage I deal is cosmic. Oh, wow. And my idea behind that is that my character's first round action is always to uh, try and surreptitiously transform himself into a different superhero. He turns into Captain Space and just fires cosmic beams everywhere. But he's not that. He's using illusions to pretend to be that. Oh, interesting. That's pretty cool. I have picked for my powers. I have signature weapon, which is Cursed Claws. Ooh. Uh, And then Transmutation and Shapeshifting. Because the claws mess with reality around me. Ooh. Dang. Sometimes to my benefit, sometimes not. (laughs) Uh, so my two yellow powers are costly strength. I can boost all my allies using transmutation with both the max and the mid die combined. And then I hinder myself using the minimum die. (laughs) (laughs) Team self hinder. But I have cursed resolve, which lets me boost myself using shapeshifting and then either remove a penalty that is currently on myself or recover health equal to the minimum die. And then I have my green ability is double edged luck. I can re-roll any one that comes up on any of my dice once and then take the result that comes from that. So if I'm using, say, costly strength and it comes up a one, I'll just leave it a one. But if I'm using cursed resolve and I get a one, I'll re-roll it. And that's why I like cursed so much. That sounds really cool. Oh, yeah. For my yellow ones, I put uh created immunity which is when you take damage from i picked radiant um you may recover that amount of health instead and then multiple assault attacking with uh my invention power uh, against multiple targets use the minimum die against each mm-hmm. 
And then for green, I picked created form. Uh, reduce physical damage by one in green, two in yellow, and three in red. All right. All right. Yeah, and then my uh, I had a question about my damage reduction ability mm -hmm. for green. It says reduce physical or energy damage, and that's in brackets. Uh, you take by one while you're in the green zone, two while you're in the yellow zone, and three while in the red zone. Um, do I just choose physical or energy there? Nope. You're going to pick one type of energy uh, that you have if you have one. And if um, you don't have one, do I have no, to choose is, physical? This oh, is like an armor ability. You're right. It's an armor ability. Yeah. Uh, you're going you're gonna to choose an energy damage, I think. Is, am I wrong? No, I think it's just any oh, physical any, or energy. Okay. Then, yeah. That's okay. real good then. That is real good. I think I'll choose energy. I thought then, anytime you saw a bracket, you had to make a choice. Maybe I'm Maybe I'm wrong there. I don't know. I'll take a look at the actual wording of it. Powered suit, damage reduction. Yeah, so either physical damage or energy damage. Oh, yeah, you're making a choice between physical or energy. That's all okay. the choice is. Okay. I thought there were two sets of brackets. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so yeah, it sound, I'll, I'll choose energy then. So uh, physical damage isn't reduced, but energy damage would be. There you go. Which sounds cool. Call to action. Yeah, like that. I really like this game. Uh, not only is it gorgeous, it has a really fun character creation system that I enjoyed a lot. Uh, I can easily see this as one I would probably revisit for creating random heroes with. Uh, and I know next week we'll be completing our characters and giving them an identity. But for now, uh, before we let you go for the week, uh, we have some quick calls to action. Uh, like we said in the beginning, remember to check out the One Shot Network Patreon at patreon.com slash one shot podcast. Anyone who pledges $5 and up, you will get access to the secret archive and you can hear one of our bonus episodes coming out this month. You can also hear the one that came out last month mm -hmm. or a couple other old ones, I think. Um, we are going to be recording more of those soon, which should be really fun to showcase. We might even start pulling in some micro games from other places, uh, like itch.io, or getting some guests to join us every now and then if we're able to get all the scheduling stuff, you know, um, I think that's one of the things about making a gaming podcast. It's just like actual gaming where scheduling is really hard. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we just want to do some micro character generation or even <gasps> play the games. Oh, blasphemy. I know. It's <laughs> unheard of. But that's why it's the secret content. <laughs> um, it'll be a good time no matter what. So uh, go ahead and check it out. Yeah. Uh, also, we are currently out of reviews to read to you. Uh, otherwise, we would be doing so right now. Uh, if you'd like to help us rectify the situation, leave us a rating and review on any of the sites where you can do that for podcasts. If we can find it, we'll read it here. If you already left us a review, thank you so much. If you want to continue helping us out, talk about us online with others, suggest us to people looking for suggestions for podcasts, or even join our Discord at discord.charactercreationcast.com and chat with us about your favorite episodes. Also, you'll be on the ground floor for any big developments as we work towards making our community and podcast even better over time. And we look forward to chatting with you. For now, thank you so much for joining us. We hope you had as much fun as we had making this episode. It was an absolutely phenomenal time. You can check out next week's episode where we turn our nonsense up to 11 um, or 11 er, I guess. Um, and we create some really great people. So until then, take care, everyone. Stay safe and keep making those amazing people. We'll be back next week. Thank you for joining us for part one of this character creation series. We'll be back in part two, picking up right where we left off. Character Creation Cast is a production of the One Shot Podcast Network and can be found online at www.charactercreationcast.com. Head to the website to get more information on our hosts, this show, and even our press kit. Character Creation Cast can also be found on Twitter at CreationCast or on our Discord server at discord.charactercreationcast.com. I'm one of your hosts, Ryan Bolter, 
and I can be found on Twitter at Lord Neptune or online at LordNeptune.com. Our other host, Amelia Antrim, can be found on Twitter at Ginger Reckoning. Music for this episode is used with a Creative Commons license or with permission from the podcast they originated from. Further information can be found within the show notes. Our main theme music is Hero Remix by Steve Combs and is used with a Creative Commons license. This podcast is owned by us under Creative Commons. This episode was edited by Ryan Bolter. Further information for the game systems used and today's guests can be found in the show notes. If you'd like to leave us a rating or review, we have links to various review platforms out there, including Apple Podcasts, in our show notes. Also, check the show notes for links to our other projects. Thanks for joining us. And remember, we find that the best part of any role-playing game is character creation. So go out there and create some amazing people. We will see you next time. We gotta read some show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Character Creation Cast is hosted by the One Shot Podcast Network. If you enjoyed our show, visit OneShotPodcast.com where you will find other great shows like One Shot. The most fun way to learn about new games is to play. On One Shot, you can discover the amazing variety in RPGs by listening to actual play. Every week, James D'Amato brings you a new episode with a talented cast of improvisers, game designers, and other notable nerds. At least once a month, One Shot features a new system exploring a wide variety of genres. The stories are self-contained, so you can jump in anywhere, and it's a great way to find your new favorite game. Discover the magic of RPGs with One Shot on your favorite podcast app.